Welcome back, everybody, to 42 Days of Magical Practice. Right. Today is, uh, we're going to talk more about breathing, it's 21, day 21, and uh, we're going to take it from kind of a more segmented approach of doing the practice just in the beginning of the day and the end of the day to doing it throughout the day right. and uh, talking a little bit more about the value of, of, <clears throat> of doing that because sometimes you know when you are starting to do this like imbibing technique of one minute throughout the day it's kind of I think it's hard for us to wrap our heads around the value of that because sure. in the beginning especially you're not you don't feel like you're maybe not dropping into that deep of a state or right. you know I don't know. And I think some of it's, you know, just our cultural influence as well. You know, what we've, you know, people always think, oh, meditation's got to be hours long or, you mm -hmm. know, they've already sort of put themselves in that mindset where they have to do this, you know, incredible amounts of training and blocks of time. Well, we have those images of yogis of course, and you know, Tibetan being on the mountain for days stuff. at a time. They're in the yeah, cave yeah, yeah, yeah. for three years. <clears throat> I mean, that kind of stuff. It's like, yeah, yeah. I mean, and they've been doing it most of their lives by right. the time they hit that stage. So it's not as big a deal as it would be if, you know, if you were to take some beginner and throw them in there, they'd be dead in a day. So it's not the same thing. Right. And so, but we don't make that correlation because nobody's telling us that. So, mm. uh, so Im imbibing, you know, what do I mean by that? Just small increments through the day, you know, that build up over time. Mm. and usually have a much greater impact on your life over the course of the day because it all is sort of based around this idea of attenuation meaning that things sort of have this uh, atrophying effect over time so like if you uh, ping on a uh, singing bowl or some chime or something like that at first we hear the strong accented note and then the resonance that's there but as time and goes, you know, time goes on, that delay, and finally it's getting, we see, we hear it as a softer and softer and softer resonance, but it's basically, that resonance always stays, but it just sorts, sort of, you know, our ability to hear it lessens and lessens and lessens, so it sort of goes throughout. The same thing is with our practice. If you're just doing, you know, I don't care, if you're doing a two hour meditation once a week, is not going to be the equivalent of doing smaller increments through the week or smaller increments through the day even is even better right so and because you you do that two hour strong hit but again by the next day or maybe the day after that by the time you re-enter the workforce or whatever it is uh that attenuation factor is going to be such that any effect that you've gotten from that is going to be dissipated in a very short period of time mm -hmm. because you haven't touched on it again. You know, the idea is that, you know, I'm pinging on that constantly so that by the time it's fading, I'm pinging on it again. And by the time that's starting to fade, I'm pinging on it again. So I'm trying to build up this resonance so that I can have it throughout the day at a certain level, right? So by the time, it's like chanting a certain amount of time. And pretty soon you can imagine yourself chanting it and you can hear the tones in your own voice and it's still going. And so, you know, through the day, and if you've done it long enough or a long enough period of time, you're going to be able to bring that up even out of the blue without saying a, without singing a note, right? You're going to be able to just bring up the idea of it. You're going to hear your own voice, you know, chanting that note or that sound. And so the same thing with this, you know, you've been trained to that, you know, that level of resonance. So imbibing just sort of, uh, dissipates that attenuation effect by by touching on it throughout the day so I'm still doing my five minutes in the morning and five minutes at the end of the day but throughout the course of the day now in order to like extend that and make more use of it is the idea that just for a minute you know a few times a day and then build it up over the days right a few times like just give yourself the goal three times today during the day mm. I'm going to do one minute of this box breathing or the full, full breath right right and so and just try to put yourself in that state now i know it's only a minute and you're used to doing five minutes but the idea is that your body through the rhythmic practice of that breathing 
is going to already, if it's anchored in well, you're going to drop into that state. Now, I'm not going to say you're in the first breath, you're going to drop right into that alpha state. But slowly but surely over time, because that momentum is carrying you through the day. So the next day you're going to, you know, you maybe you do for a few days, you do three times one minute. And then once you're starting to feel the effects of that, wow, you know, my day is calmer, things are moving easier. I'm able to understand the information and then put it out in the right way to get the most effect out of my day that I'm, you know, a positive effect in the way that I want to getting more work done. However, how it translates for you. Uh, then, you know, another few days later, you're going to start doing maybe five times a day. You know, so let's just say in the course of every hour a day, an ideal practice in the course of every hour a day, you're going to put one minute in breathing. So if you have an eight hour day or a 10 hour day or a 12 hour day, <laughs> if you're a nurse and you have a 12 or a 16 hour day, sure. you know, so 12 or 16 times a day for one minute, you're going to use that fourfold breath to drop into that alpha state. The, the other thing is that your mind is going to be so attuned to that after a while, it's going to use and it's going to like the end result so much because it's so effective for you. The end result is so uh, predictable and it's so cognizant for you that when you're doing that regularly, it's going to drop in faster and faster each time you do it because it knows it's only going to get a minute. So it wants to take full advantage of that. So your brain starts to entrain much quicker and your body starts to loosen its tension and sort of get into that zone. So, but if you do that one minute each, each hour, uh, pretty soon, you know, that's going to carry you through the day. So you've done your five minutes and then you're pinging on it the first hour after you're out of that. And so that's going to bring that attenuation, you know, it's not going to fade off as much. You're going to be reminding yourself of that. And then the next hour, reminding yourself again, next hour, reminding yourself again. And so, and then at the end of the day, you get that reward of the five minutes. So again, there's a lot of factors that are going on here, right? Because every time you get into like a state that feels good to you. So now we're back to, you know, energy and motion or your emotions, right? When you feel it in your body that that's giving you relief and you're able to perform at a much higher rate, there's a dopamine release at the end of that. So it's like anticipation and doing that breathing. And then at the end, you feel great and you're able to do more with less, <laughs> with less effort on your part. In other words, mm -hmm. you know, there's going to be a huge dopamine rush for that. So, and nothing uh, trumps dopamine when, you know, it comes to the body, right? So the body, the brain is always looking for that dopamine rush. So again, uh, it's the, it's the pleasure chemical, right? So it's like, we're always looking for that no matter what we're doing. And so, uh, anything that will give you a consistent source of that, any action or habit that you're doing that will give you a consistent mm -hmm. source of that is going to, again, get pushed to the top of the hierarchy. You know, you're going to want to, it's going to give, it's going to find time for you to do that. In the beginning, it may be a struggle to find three times a day. I guarantee you by the, by the time you're willing to try you know, once an hour, your body's, you, you know, your mind's going to be looking for those. Is, is it time yet? Is it time for me to get my minute in? Is, mm. it, is it time for me to get my minute? In? Mm, <laughs> because mm, it wants that dopamine rush at the end. And of course, you know, dopamine does more than just, it's not just a pleasure chemical, but again, in that state of feeling really, really well, you know, you're able to function at a much higher level. You're able to, everything you do is a much higher production value. So, uh, you know, this is it. I mean, I think there are just, uh, so many benefits to doing it this way, as opposed to these giant blocks of time. Now, if, if you're a person that can do that and you get to that point and then you're finding that you have time at the end of the weekend or when your day's off, when you can get an hour of time in, then by all means, you know, do it. I mean, I probably wouldn't do the fourfold breath for an hour. That would be a little extreme, but if you could do it for 20 minutes, that'd be great. Or you, uh, bring in another aspect of meditation for that other time, you know, burning or one of those that we've already done, mm -hmm. right? Or one of the practices, you know, you're cleaning or whatever. And at the end of the cleaning, you're doing, maybe your reward is another five minutes of, uh, you know, the fourfold breath. So again, I'm, once I've anchored it in, I'm constantly using that as the carrot that gets me to engage in these other things that may have been a little more, you know, that takes a little more effort to sort of engage. Once I have a way to consistently release that dopamine and my brain knows it and my body knows it, 
then using that as the carrot that gets you into these other practices in a much better way is, is going to be a lot easier. Mm. So it, it has a lot of value there. And, uh, but I think that, uh, you know, again, understanding this idea of attenuation and then, you know, knowing that, you know, small amounts done consistently over a longer period of time are going to, you know, weigh in with much more momentum mm. than these blocks of time done here and there. That's, mm. that's going to be a big thing for you. And you could do that with any of the practices that we're, we're engaged in or that we've, we've added to people's lives or that they're, they want to experiment with, you know, small amounts of any of these focused types of concentration uh, throughout the day, regardless of what they are, you know, they're going to have a much uh, better um, outlook, a much better um, end result doing that than just giant blocks of time, you know, that are just sporadic. There's too much time in between where you're not in that zone. The you know, idea is to be in that flow state for longer periods of time. And so, and that's it. I mean, it's, it's pretty concise. I mean, again, hopefully people will engage in the practice even without knowing exactly you know the the ins and outs but just with the basic understanding of what i've already said mm. and try it and see what the end result is and when the end result comes back as a positive influence then you're going to look into you know understanding at a more complex level you know these ideas of attenuation or you know momentum all of these things that will sort of you know push us along and and give you a broader understanding of the whole impact of of all of these practices and and how they culminate in a in a quicker you know end result of what you want in your life and speaking of that how you know <clears throat> how do you incorporate the idea of the end result that you have in mind for all these practices into those one minute imbibing throughout the day. Mm -hmm. So uh, again, if my idea is that in this imbibing state, my end result for that little one minute practice is mm -hmm. to move from a beta state of coherent brainwaves. Hopefully you're in a coherent beta and not in a frazzled one, but it mm -hmm. works either way, right? Yeah. So um, even, if I, even if that one minute takes you from a frazzled sort of incoherent beta to a coherent beta, you're still gonna be at, a way ahead of the curve, right? Mm. But if you can drop into alpha as, you know, as a end result of that in that short one minute, I mean, here's the whole thing. Again, it sort of opens your perceptual state up to get more information in. And you can see a little bit more clearly how uh, your end result is going to fit into the bigger picture. So, you know, in that sort of relax, again, where my interior is slightly more real than my exterior, or it's sort of like that blending. It's sort of like a veil that's being sort of pulled aside. I can see a little more clearly. I can see through, you know, there's that sort of that bridge territory again, where, again, just for that few seconds maybe at the end, I'm sort of slipping in where my interior is more real than my exterior. Mm. And in that state, I'm holding in my mind my end result already completed. That's the idea anyway. Mm. So again, and then holding that gives me a little boost, right? That's that little bit of dopamine again at the end of that training. It's not just the sense of being calmer. It's the sense of from that calm state, seeing the picture more clearly. And that's an exciting state. Mm. You know, when you're full of excitement, you've got a lot of energy. Mm. You know, you're able to achieve you know, what you're doing afterwards in a much more efficient way. Mm. You know, you've got energy to burn. You know, it's like, mm. think of any time that you were at work and it was sort of the normal everyday slugging it out. But then, you know, a, at a certain day, you know, you had this thing at the end of the day that you were going to be, you were excited to go to and, and do. And it was something that, you know, you kept bringing your mind back to and, you know, envisioning yourself there. It's like your day goes faster and a hell of a lot better usually. I think that's the other thing too is um, when we, I think for a lot of us, we get stuck in a kind of um, this mode of like feeling like you're reactionary mm. to your day where it's like your day is putting out fires. Right. Your day is whack-a-mole. Yep. You know, you're basically just dealing with the problems that arise during that day, whether you're a business owner or someone working in a business or you have your own or sure. whatever, you know, it's like, sure. you know, problem, take care of it, problem, take care of it, problem, take care of it. So, right. you know, right. 
And again, you know, the idea would be, you know, from this uh, broader perspective, you know, and maybe we should even say a deeper perspective, not just opening up this way, but opening up this way. So I see those potential problems coming sooner and I can deflect them sooner because I see them coming way before they really blow up to that reactionary stage. I cut it off at the past. So that may be, you know, me saying, taking the initiative and saying, you know, we should, I should do something about this now before it becomes a problem. And that gives us, you know, that, uh, being able to drop into alpha and being able to open up our perception or lengthen our perception, see that from a different, you know, a wider view and a deeper view will give me a different perspective. And now things that I wouldn't have even noticed until they were a problem, I notice way ahead of time. And I, because I deal with them on the, at the onset, mm. they never become a problem. So I'm already dissipating my whack-a-mole day-to-day existence. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm proactive. I'm dealing with things before they even become a problem. I'm anticipating. And when we think about people in business and, and in different areas, you know, they're the best performers are always anticipating, you know, or, or looking to see, you know, where might their problems come up mm. and, you know, can I see that? Can I take measures ahead of time before it comes a problem to make sure that that doesn't happen? Mm -hmm. The best in sports do that too, right? They're looking for the plays that are telegraphed or they're looking, they have a total right. view of the field or whatever. They, they, they're already running in a direction. Everybody's going, where's he going? And all of a sudden, you know, he's at the place where the guy's throwing or whatever it is, mm -hmm. right? So they see this broader spectrum of what's going on and not just focused on the one guy or the whatever, whatever's happening. Because right. when you're reactionary, you're always behind the curve. Right. When you're proactive, you're always ahead of it. And, you know, deflecting something is a hell of a lot easier at its origin than it is when it's got all that momentum coming at you. Mm. You know, so that's the idea, right? You know, you're cutting mm -hmm. it off before it starts. Yeah, right. So, right. Yeah. And okay. that's how we dissipate and make our days less of that reactionary, you know, phase. Yeah, right. So, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. not like all these things that have a lot of momentum coming at you and dissipating your own. Right. But yours is so strong that you're cutting off things before they become, before they become that adversaries. And so it looks like, you know, and to the outside, it looks just like you're flowing through your day in a smoother way than, than most others. Everybody mm -hmm. else is scrambling and you're just, you know, you're very efficient and effective at what you do. Mm -hmm. But it's because your sight is a lot farther down the tube than everybody else's. Mm -hmm. you know, you're, you're taking care of things before they start. And that's it. And, uh, you know, I mean, I think that anybody who's successful in just about anything does that, you know, mm -hmm. they, they're already, uh, preparing for that or thinking about it and then looking for those opportunities to sort of <laughs> rear their ugly heads. If it's something, you know, that is going to be a problem later on and cutting it off at the pass, mm -hmm. right? Good parents, I mean, do that, you know, when, with their kids, right? When they, when, just when they start to, you know, sort of turn down a bad road or whatever it is, make a bad decision. It's like they're cutting it off. They're nipping it in the bud right away. So that, you know, they're going to have the, you know, those kids are going to have the benefit of that because later on, you know, they're, <laughs> they're not going to have the chance to sort of get this momentum built up where, you know, more and more things are happening and, you know, now it's out of control. You know, they're, yeah. they're stopping it, you know, they're deflecting it before it gets going. I think that's one of the things that, you know, I've always, liked about you as a teacher, you know, just in having that idea of, you know, learning to be more effective at any type of magical practice or energetic work or whatever is not just about knowing how to, you know, enter into an altered state more effectively or in a more controlled way or whatever, but it's about being a more effective person in your life and in the world, you know, because there's, there's probably, I mean, there's so many examples of people that can enter into, you know, altered states or right. whatever, but it's like, but, you know, has, you know, is, how, what's the picture of your life actually look like? You right. Know, is it chaotic or is it harmonious? And, you know, are you an effective human being, not just, you know, a psychonaut or something like that or yeah. whatever? <laughs> I, and, you know, I mean, and again, to be fair, I mean, we, 
it's it's very difficult to judge those things and only from our point of reference mm. you know each person should be you know sort of and they are to every extent that i can think of you know they are their own judge and mm. executioner as they say right jury judge mm. and executioner so mm, but it's a very consistent thing that we're constantly regardless of what practice or what we do we're always looking for some kind of outside approval and especially with these states that are inner, and then uh, you know we see them manifest in our exterior world from our inner state, not from an exterior state, right? So that's the whole idea with this type of practice is that we're trying to develop our inner state, and that will reflect in our environment in a way that's good for us. But we mm. don't need an outside approval to verify that. Mm. It's, it's the hardest thing to learn, one of the hardest things to learn. You know, as soon as you let that go, as long as you're okay with it. I mean, it's one thing to deal with your teacher like that or whatever, or, you know, colleagues even sometimes, you know, just to sort of bounce ideas off of, you know, this isn't going so well. How do I, how do I, you know, it's not working. How do I adjust it or, you know, listen to my thing and see what I'm doing here. Right, right. Uh, you know, that's different because they're like-minded, right? They have right. the same goal. And if I can help you, I will. You know, and your colleagues the same, right? If they can help you, they will. And you would do the same for them. So, uh, but, but uh, you know, it's not like you're looking for their approval. Mm -hmm. You're looking for their outside view to maybe adjust the way that you're doing a specific thing or not doing it, mm -hmm. right? Um, but it's, again, one of those hardest things to not look for somebody outside of those circles. <clears throat> to approve of or to verify that you did this, you know, that you did this just from, you know, changing your interior state, your exterior state changed. Mm. It's very difficult. I mean, we're in some ways, I, I wonder if we're not hardwired to do that, that that self doubt is always approval. there to seek approval and, yeah. and verification, you know, they're, they seem like they're the same thing, but it really is, you're looking for that, you know, sort of an outside impartial entity to, you know, to say, yeah, you did that. Good it's job, like, does buddy. that make, yeah, does that make it better for you? Yeah. It's like, does it change? Does it give you an extra percentage point of, of uh, value in what you did? Not really. I mean, if, it, if the state is no different, if your end result is no different, whether somebody verifies it or not, but maybe for some people it is, and if that's the case. But it's a harder way to go to try to get, you know, because you're, you're tempting people to throw the element of doubt at you. And when you start doubting or putting more, because you're putting more emphasis on what they think than what you think. Mm. Now you've already thrown a breaker, you know, that's sort of going to interrupt your coherent pattern, right? You've right. got, now you've got another wave in the background going, you didn't really do that. Oh, maybe I didn't really do that. Oh, you didn't do that. Maybe I didn't really do that. <laughs> and so mm -hmm. one more thing you have to dissipate and get rid of, right. you know, instead of having everything in training the same. You know, What's it's funny wrong with though, that? I think people feel that when they are in that approval seeking mode. Oh, sure. I think that, you know, there is a part of them that after the words are out, it's like you know when you've engaged in uh, some type of approval seeking dialogue with somebody because it's like as soon as all the words are out and then the reactions are happening whatever they are positive negative neutral it's like I shouldn't have said Ugh. that yeah <laughs> that's usually the thing it's like oh god why did I even bring that up you know because yeah, now yeah. I'm gonna have to work to bash this back and I only have to work on myself it's not even that person's fault right it's your right. fault for you know engaging them in that level mm -hmm. you know it's like it's why why is it so important for that to happen there's something there that you know we all need to address at one time or another i don't know a single practitioner that hasn't right. been in that mode at one time or another right right not not a single one right and so uh it's a, usually a big hurdle to get over right and and plenty of people will say that they've gone over that hurdle way before they have so but mm -hmm. eventually you'll come face to face with it. You know, so it's, and it is a big one. So again, keeping that silence to, to be silent, right? Right. To be silent. I, I think it's so important not to dissipate and, your energy that way. And it also means knowing when there's a time to uh, 
maybe share with people that are close oh, sure. to you to you know to otherwise we wouldn't be doing this deeper, what are you talking about <laughs> yeah no 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 i just mean like even in terms of like your own experiences or whatever of course, to of connect course. with your colleagues or your friends or your family or yeah. whatever it's like it, it and in some ways i think that it's just important it's more about being like kind of self-aware to know whether what you know what you're doing in that moment is are you seeking for something or are you are you just doing it for you know, to help someone to bond else, or to yeah, help to them, help. Or yeah, whatever. exactly. Like, All of those things are important, yeah. and and uh, you know, everybody has their own sort of you know uh, reasons for doing that. Um, you know, again, I come back to this, right? So it's like why. Why, after all these years, you know, do something so public? And uh, I think it's just time. You know, it's it's just time. There's there's so much information out there and very little actual experiential knowledge that, uh, and and in a pretty, you know, non, um, you know, it's in a not in a forum that you know sort of dictates one thing over another, or you know, you have to belong to this yoga group, or you have to belong to this. Tibetan Buddhist, whatever, or you have to belong to this, you know, uh, monastic order, or you know, it's it's not within those realms. It's just sort of in plain language because I think people are so disenfranchised from their organized groups, or you know, even from themselves as being capable of doing something for themselves and lifting themselves above the norm, above what's expected of them. Or where they're expected to be in life, to to be courageous enough to engage that and think that you can actually have some control over that and be courageous enough and and strong enough to do that and sort of put yourself out there that way. I think this, this is the time for that to happen. You know, people are mm. frantic all over the place, and you know, if if I can help in some way to make that a reality for them and show them that they do have power, that they do have an ability to go beyond what the norm is, then, then I think that that's, that's valuable for me to at least try. If it doesn't yeah. happen and nobody likes it, then, right. then I did my part. I'll right. fade into the background. My life still continues in a great way. Not a big deal. So, but at least to, you know, to offer it, you know, at least as a choice for people not to convert them just to say this is all you and uh you know and you do have the ability to change it and all this lacking is for your you know to understand the basic ideas the principles and to try mm. to try you know, you know do or do not there is no try right so it's that idea you know you need to be actively doing it it's not just gathering more information more books more you know, intellectual understanding is not the same thing as knowledge. Mm -hmm. It's not. Knowledge is experience. How do I take this practice, do it, and apply it in my life so it has benefits for me and those people around me? You know, when I really have it down, then I can extend that out and, and help more people, you know, to do the same thing or better. Yeah. I hope that everybody does better than me, really. I mean, I really do. That would be incredible. So, you know, that's, that's, that's what I hope. So, yeah, that's it. Don't cry. I will slap you. I wasn't going to cry. Don't cry. <laughs> <laughs> that will be it right there. <laughs> so, we covered imbibing and, uh, you know, concrete practice of bringing the breathing into everyday life and, you know, why it's important and the, the end results. Yeah. So, you know, and a little more. So, yeah. just sort of tapping on those things, it's important to do that so yeah. that people can put it in the larger context. That's all. Yeah. And, and I know sometimes I get carried away, and, you know, but it's... <laughs> no, it's good. But it's there, you know, so... Hopefully it'll be understandable and, and people will take it for what it's worth and give it a fair shake, give it a fair try. You know, you, you know, should be able to do this. I don't know anybody that really, that doesn't have the ability to do it. Mm. It's just that they either choose to do it or not. You know, can you put off, you know, your normal routine for 42 days and engage in something that's going to, you know, potentially bring you uh, a different life than what you have right now. Yeah. If that's what you're striving for. More enriched in whatever way you want.
Yeah. Yeah. It's your choice, not mine. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> yeah. All right. That's it. Cool. That's all I got for yeah. today. Thanks, guys. Should be enough, I hope. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. See you tomorrow.